your husband's not joining us today? Is your husband joining us today? No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. How are we? We are well. Thank you. How are you? I'm well. I'm good. I'm loving this weather. I wish it would stay like this all year. Well, for those of us that live here year round, <laughs> it does change. <laughs> so we enjoy it while it's here. Yes. All right, let's find a tall spine. So if it helps you to sit up on a block in Sukhasana cross-legged or hero's pose. So try and if you're feeling like you're rocking back on the tailbone, see if you can bring the pelvis to tilt slightly forward. So then you can feel the lengthening of your spine upwards. So this class is yoga and meditation. So we do a little bit of both. <laughs> it's a gentle physical part of the practice to help us basically to get our nervous system to a point where we can get into a place of meditation, a place of stillness. And meditation is a practice. So I think we've been meeting now since October and increasing the time that we are in meditation each week. Uh, but it's a practice. So if you find that your mind is wandering, that it's hard to settle that chatter, just go easy on yourself. It happens. <laughs> and that's why we just continue to return to our mat and practice. So I want to talk a little bit today about the basic eight limb path of yoga. Ashtanga or Hatha yoga. The foundation is an eight limb path, starting with the yamas, the niyamas. Those are our five, there's five yamas, five niyamas, and there are restraints and observances. So they're kind of like the code of ethics of how we walk through our daily life. Then we go into the physical practice. So we take those teachings of the yamas and the niyamas and apply them while we're moving physically. And hopefully then it helps you to detach from your ego, allowing you to be more present in the physical practice. Once the physical practice is achieved, we move into the part of the eight limb path that helps us to turn inward. And by turning inward, then that leads us into being able to meditate. And meditation then leads to the final step, which is called samadhi. And samadhi is the really the ultimate goal of our yoga practice to help us reach a higher state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that might come for a glimpse. It might happen just, it might be a moment or as you practice, you might find that you're able to be in that state of higher consciousness for longer periods of time. And that can be called bliss, ecstasy without taking any pill, <laughs> or the super consciousness. So today we're going to focus on, we are going to do some of the physical, but I'm going to hopefully cue you that these are the names in Sanskrit after asana, which is the physical, we'll do a little bit of breath work, which you're familiar with, that's called pranayama. And then we lead into pratyahara, which is a redirecting of your senses. So as we redirect our senses to turn inward, that then leads us to dharana, a state of concentration. Then dhyana, meditation, and who knows, maybe samadhi. <laughs> you might hit that moment of samadhi in your meditation today, or we'll end today. Last week, we did it the reverse. We did a little yoga nidra. We did shavasana before meditation. Today, we'll do meditation and then come on to our backs. So. So let's just start with closing our eyes. Let's do a little grounding to bring us here to our mats today, to 
help us let go of any thoughts that you were having as you walked into this space. Let go of any thoughts of what you need to do after, or after this practice. Let's begin with a little bit of heart opening, a little bit of activation of the heart. After all, it was Valentine's week. So left hand, flip that palm up. Bring your index finger down toward your palm and then wrap your thumb around the index finger. The third, fourth, fifth fingers extend. Same mudra with your right hand. So bring your right hand, bring the index finger down to your palm, wrap it with your thumb, and then take your third, fourth, fifth fingers to your sternum and start to lightly tap. So just a light tapping to activate our heart center. I want you to bring your attention. The tapping should just be automatic now. Light, just tap, 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 tap. So now you can focus on your inhales and your exhales through the nose. Let's match our inhales with our exhale. So empty the breath out. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Continue at your own pace, maybe silently saying the breath count to yourself, but continuing to tap our heart space, our heart center. Feeling the rise and fall of the breath as you feel the sits bones root you down into your seat. Inviting the word love into the breath. Finish the statement, I love blank. Silently saying that affirmation to yourself, keep filling in the blank with different things that come to your mind and notice any sensations. Notice if maybe it brings a smile to your face or strength. The word love can conjure up different feelings, feelings of strength, feelings of peace maybe, serenity maybe. Courage. There's a spectrum. As you acknowledge things that fill you with love, what it conjures up inside. So just finishing up now, one more affirmation. I love fill in the blank for yourself. Another inhale and exhale it out. Let the tapping come to a stop and then move your hand, keeping that mudra, move it over your heart and just take a moment here in silence to feel the pulsating of your heart. And then slide your hands together at your heart center in prayer pose, Anjali Mudra, 
take a moment to set an intention for your practice. So as we move into this, this withdrawal of senses, this deeper concentration, maybe your intention today is to challenge yourself, set your intention as it relates to this deeper state of concentration, this deeper state of turning inward. And then let's join our voices together, our energies together with the sound of Om. Take a full inhale through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> and then we'll Om on the next exhale. <clears throat> Oh. Maybe turn the corners of your mouth up slightly. Start to flicker the eyes open a little bit at a time. Just rejoining the space. Noticing maybe if you feel any different from when you first came to sit on the mat. And then let's come on to our backs. And when you get onto your back, draw your knees into your chest. Roll your feet around. So circling your ankles one direction a few times. And then reverse that direction. Notice how your back feels as it melts into the mat. Feel your whole back on the mat. <laughs> and then extend your legs out, slide those heels to the top end of your mat. Inhale your arms overhead and point your toes. Feel the natural arch form in your back. And then exhale the arms alongside your body and pull your toes towards you, flexing the feet and pushing through the heels and press the middle and low part of your back into the mat. Inhale, float the arms overhead and point your toes. Natural arch forms. And then exhale, arms alongside, draw your toes towards you, press the middle low part of your back and the mat. And then relax your feet, draw your right knee into your chest. Interlace your fingers over your shins, just below your knee. And then keep that left leg active. So flex that left foot, press that left leg into the mat. And then on your uh, it's going to be your exhale. So take an inhale and then on your exhale, bring your forehead to meet your knee and release the head back down. Inhale. Exhale, bring forehead toward the knee. Inhale as you release. Exhale, bring forehead to knee. Try and keep that left leg pressing into the mat. Inhale, one more time. Exhale, forehead to knee. And release and slide that right leg out onto the mat. Draw left heel toward you, bringing the left knee toward the chest. Interlace the fingers over the shin, just below the knee. Make the right leg active. So flex that foot, press that right leg into the mat and then inhale and exhale forehead to the knee. Inhale lower. Exhale forehead to knee. Inhale open. Exhale forehead to knee. Inhale, open, one more. Exhale, forehead to knee. And release. Slide that left leg out. And draw the right knee in again. This time, interlace the fingers behind the right thigh. Flex your right foot and keep your right knee at a 90 degree angle. Flex the left foot. 
press that left leg into the mat. And now you're going to pull the right leg towards you while pushing the foot toward the mirror. So you're not gonna win that battle. <laughs> that leg's gonna stay at 90 degrees, but you're feeling you pull the leg towards you as you push the heel towards the mirror. So you push that heel and the foot. So this releases our psoas muscle. Push the heel into my hand. Feel that? So you feel that expansiveness in the pelvis and the release for this big muscle that connects our back to our legs. And then go ahead and extend that right leg now up to the ceiling. Fingers are still interlaced. And point and flex that right foot. Rebend the right knee. And now drop it out to the side, coming into tree pose on our backs. So the sole of your right foot comes to the inside of the left leg. This right knee dropping out, hands can rest on your hips to encourage this opening of the hips. The sole of your right foot could be anywhere uh, against the left leg. And now inhale the arms overhead, like you're growing your branches of the tree, separate the arms a little bit wider than the shoulders and let them rest on the floor. So just like you've grown the branches of your tree. And now engage that left leg as if you're standing on it. So leg, foot is flexed. And energetically bring the sole of the right foot toward the left leg and energetically the left leg toward the right foot. Slide the shoulder blades under a little bit so those arms can fall to the earth. One more full inhale. And then exhale the arms down. Bring that right knee to center. Extend the right leg out. Draw left knee into your chest. Interlace the fingers behind the left thigh. So let's do that. So as release on this side. So right leg stays engaged. Press that right leg into the mat. Left foot flexes. Start to pull the left leg towards you as you push your left heel, left foot toward the mirrors. Breathe in, breathe out. So even deep breaths. And now we'll extend that left leg up to the ceiling. Point and flex, point and flex, point and flex. Draw that left knee into your chest. Let it drop down to the floor. Sole of the left foot coming toward the inside of the right leg. So it can be inside thigh or it can be a little bit lower. Try not to place it on the knee because just like when we stand in tree pose, we don't want the foot resting against the knee. And then on an inhale, floating the arms overhead, take them a little wider, glide your shoulder blades under so the arms can rest comfortably on the floor. And then flex that right foot like you're standing on it and energetically bring the sole of the foot toward the right leg and the right leg toward the sole of that left foot. And just notice what parts of the body are engaged. 
and what parts of the body can soften. Full breath in, full breath out, noticing the gentle opening for the hip. So tree pose when we stand is a balance, but it's also a hip opener. One more full inhale and then exhale, arms alongside, bring that left knee to center and then draw both knees in to your chest. Bring your forehead up to your knees, take a full inhale and exhale, breathing into the back of the neck. And then we'll start to rock forward and back at least three times before coming up, feeling that nice massage for our spine. Get enough momentum to come up where you place your feet on the mat, knees bent, hands under the knees. We're gonna move into boat pose, Dhanurasana. So support yourself first. Bring your elbows out to the sides, but helps the chest lift. Spine is stay straight and then start leaning back. Lean back where you feel like you're still grounded on your sits bones, but you feel your core engaged. And you might stay here with the feet on the mat or maybe try lifting the feet off the mat, balancing on the sits bones. So concentration here. Use a point in front of you that's not moving to focus on as you maybe lift the legs a little higher, but still lifting the chest up. Maybe the arms float out to the side, maybe the legs straighten. Breathe in, breathe out. You can support under your knees at any time, still focusing on the chest lifting spine long. One more full inhale and then exhale, separate the knees, become as wide as your mat, bring your hands in front and bring your chest through the knees. And then exhale, tuck your chin into your chest, rock back on the tailbone, rounding the spine. Inhale, bringing the chest through. And then exhale, rounding the spine. And then come to neutral, grab your two blocks, bring your blocks behind you at the lowest height. They're gonna go underneath your hands. So then bring your feet back to the mat, knees bent, We're setting up for a reverse tabletop using the block. So your fingertips are coming over the block just a little bit and your palms on the block. On an inhale, lift your hips up. Straighten your arms. Chin to chest to start. So gaze looking at the mirror. And then maybe look at the ceiling. If that's comfortable, maybe tilting the gaze back a little bit more, looking to open our throat. Breathe in, breathe out. Pressing into the feet, feeling engagement in your glutes. Start bringing the chin back to the chest. Exhale as you lower down a little bit more accessible with the blocks. Bring your hands alongside your hips, flex your feet, press into the palms. This is called staff pose or dandasana. So we're pressing into the mat, lengthening the spine up and then engage your thighs so your heels lift off the mat. Draw the belly in and release. Cross at your ankles, roll forward to our tabletop pose. So finding hands and knees here where we're stacking shoulders, elbows, and wrists. 
your knees are under, separate your knees a little bit. So they're under your hips and then spread your fingers. Fingers are spread, plug your thumbs in to the mat, plug your index finger into the mat and then your tips of your third, fourth, fifth fingers. Draw the belly in on an inhale, lift the crown of your head, tilt your tailbone up for cow pose. And then exhale, pull the belly in even more, round the spine, tuck chin to chest, tuck the tailbone, cat pose. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. Inhale into cow. And exhale into cat. And then find neutral and we're gonna separate our knees wider. So take them to the edges of your mat and then bring your toes to touch in the back. So try and get into this wide-legged child's pose. So knees, really try and bring them to the edges of your mat. And then walk your hands back as your seat goes to your heels. Now stretch your arms out in front of you. So making this more of an active child's pose with the arms straight and the head then dropping toward the earth in between the arms. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathing in, deep, even breaths, and breathing out, deep, even exhale. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Our asana practice is helping us develop a steady and comfortable relationship with the earth and all beings. So child's pose is a great reminder of that as we're bowing down to the earth and the earth is supporting us. On your next inhale, lifting up, coming back to tabletop and then threading the needle. So knees, hip distance apart again, have your shoulders, elbows, and wrists stacked. And then inhale, lifting the right arm up. Find that opening in the chest. And then exhale, threading it under the left, bringing the right side of your face down to the mat, keeping your sacrum level. So keep that left hand in close by the face to start. Check in, make sure your hips are in line with your knees. And now slide that left hand, that left arm straight up to the top of your mat. And just finding this extension for the arms. If you can straighten that left arm. Breathe in, breathe out. So you can stay here or an option to bind where we would float this left arm up, turn the hand, so then you're able to bend at the elbow and that left arm wraps around and maybe the fingertips reach the top of your right thigh. Breathe in, breathe out. And then inhale, straighten that, if you took the bind, Straighten that left arm, bring it back down. So it's long reaching toward the top of your mat. And then we'll all bring that left hand in close to the face together. Inhale as you press into the left hand, lifting that right arm, opening up into the twist again, and then release the right hand down. Find tabletop, take a cow and cat in between. So inhale, lift the crown of your head, tilt the tailbone up and exhale into cow. Inhale to neutral and then lift that left arm up, opening the chest 
Threading it under the right arm, bringing left side of your face down to the mat. Take a full breath here, making sure hips are in line with your knees, that your low back, your sacrum is level. And then maybe slide that right hand to the top of the mat. So that right arm fully extending now. Left arm extended as well. And the left palm is face up, where the right palm is face down. If you want to take the bind, inhale, lifting that right arm up, turning the hand so the thumb then points down as you bend that right elbow and reach the fingertips for the left thigh. Breathe in, breathe out. If you took the bind on your next inhale, release that right arm. Float it back down so the hand is coming to the top of the mat. Full breath in. And then exhale, sliding that right hand by the face. Press into it as you inhale that left arm up, opening the chest. And then exhale, lowering that down. And now grab both of your blocks and place them in front. So your wrists are slightly in front of your shoulders. And then extend that right leg behind you. Draw that right knee into your chest as we step the right foot forward in between the blocks. Maybe deep in the bend, a little bit more in that right knee, dropping left quad down. I'm going to ask you to go over. Staying on. <laughs> Doesn't take much for this room to shift temperature. And now bring the blocks under your shoulders. Stack shoulders with your hips. Press into your right foot so it takes a little weight out of your left knee. And then inhale, sweeping the arms up on Johnny Asana. Gaze is looking straight ahead. If you're feeling at all unstable, draw your attention to your center, to your midline, and energetically. Draw your hips toward that midline and see if that helps. And then bring hands to heart center. We're going to add a twist here, twisting open to the right. So keep that length, lean forward, maybe hooking left elbow with right knee, press palm into palm, looking at your right elbow. And keeping the twist for another Breath, inhale, and then exhale, hands to heart center, float the arms up, and then down to the blocks. And we're going to flip the right toes up, coming up onto our right heel, half split pose, it's called half Hanumanasana. So this might be enough. If you're feeling an intense stretch already in this right hamstring, keeping the right foot flexed. Or maybe if you want to hinge forward, lead with the heart, keep your spine long, deepening the stretch. If the breath is compromised in any way, back out of the, the hinging forward. Left hip stays in line with left knee. We don't wanna sit back in this. We wanna stay upright, and then it's a hinging forward. And then lift up, plant that right foot, bring the blocks forward, and then step that right knee back. Push back, keep the hands on the blocks, push your seat to your heels, bring the tummy, low belly to your thighs and the head between the arms. Breathe in, breathe out. And then inhale, lifting back to tabletop, 
hands on the blocks. Extend left leg behind you and then bring that left knee towards your chest so you can step that left foot forward. See if you can maybe deepen the bend in this left knee a little bit. So finding this is another version of low lunge. So a lot of times we might tuck our right toes under and do low lunge this way, but this is considered low lunge too. A big stretch for the psoas muscle or hip flexors. As we bend the forward knee, we're getting a stretch, deeper stretch for the front right quad. One more full inhale and exhale. Chest is open. We're not rounding or slouching. And then shift your hips back so the blocks come under your shoulders now. And find your midline. Press into the left foot to take weight off the right knee. Inhale, arms up by the ears. Keep drawing hips toward midline for stability. Increasing that concentration. Hands to heart center, twisting open to the left. So before you lean forward, find some left. So twist open to your left. Now lean forward, hooking that right elbow with left knee. We come into the twist with our spine long. So it helps protect the low back. We're getting the twist from our navel up. And still working on balance here. Maybe gaze looks at your left elbow. And then inhale, hands back to heart center. Float the arms up and then down to the blocks. Flip the left toes up, finding our half Hanumanasana on this side. So you want to flex that left foot. You want your right hip in line with your right knee. So option to stay here. If you're staying here, maybe try closing the eyes and just focusing on pulling the left toes toward you or opting to hinge forward. Keep that spine long as you bring the heart toward your leg. Breathe in. Breathe. Out. Breathe in. Breathe out. If you hinged forward, lifting back up, rock onto that left foot, bring the blocks to frame the left foot, and then bring that left knee to meet the right. And we'll come back into this child's pose with the arms extended, hands on blocks. This might feel good for the shoulders here and the upper back. Full breath in, full breath out. Inhale back to tabletop, and now you can move the blocks off to the side. Step both feet back, so finding plank pose. Put a little bend in your knees and push back so your low belly goes to your thighs and then straighten the legs, downward facing dog. Full breath in, full breath out. Maybe pedal out your downward dog. So drop one heel and bend the other knee and alternate. Head is between the arms. So we want our neck to be tension free and downward dog. We don't want our shoulders scrunching up to our ears in downward dog. We want to be able to feel the expansiveness, the openness. And you can have a slight bend in your knees and downward dog. That might help your hips move toward the ceiling a little bit more. One more full inhale and exhale, and then look between your hands. So lift your gaze and then walk one footprint at a time to the top of the mat and lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. 
Uttanasana, forward fold. You might support under your hands with a block or two. You might put a little bend in your knees, but you wanna see if you can get your head to hang. Maybe shake the head yes and no. And then everybody deepen the bend in their knees. Let the belly come to the tops of your thighs, hang like a raggedy and doll, and then inhale, rolling up to stand. Take two breaths to do it. Inhale, the arms overhead, reach right hand around left wrist. Your feet are in line with your hips. Press in to all four corners of the feet as we encourage this left arm to lift up and we side bend to the right. So try and keep this left arm in line with the ear so that we're not collapsing forward, but we're keeping the side long and reach that left arm, lengthening it. And then come through center, exhale, arms down to the side. And then inhale, arms overhead, wrap the left hand around right wrist. And then coming into the side, bend on this side again. Now right arm in line with the ear. With each inhale and exhale, lengthening this right side. Inhale to center, float the arms down and behind your back, interlacing the fingers. And either if the shoulders, if you're feeling real tight, the knuckles can come to your sacrum and then you'll draw your shoulder blades and your elbows together. Or if there's some space to extend the arms, this is all about opening the chest. So find the best position for the arms in order to feel that opening in the chest, but also a softness in the shoulders. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out. Maybe lengthen down through the tailbone to get any arch out of the back. One more full breath in and out and release, roll out your shoulders one direction and then the other direction. So tree pose. So stand into asana for a moment, bring your feet hip distance apart, rock forward and back a couple of times. So you feel the weight into the balls of your feet and then you feel the weight in your heels just a couple of times and then ground. So before we move in a tree, we're gonna do a little breath work. Bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your low belly. So we've done this before, three part yogi breath where you inhale a third, it's gonna to come to this low belly. The other third comes to the rib cage and then the next third comes to your chest so we can close our eyes or keep our eyes open but feel yourself root down through your feet all four corners of your feet and then empty the breath out fully inhale a third a third a third and exhale a third a third, a third. Inhale a third, a third, and a third. Exhale a third, a third, a third. Two more rounds on your own, bringing your awareness to the breath, to this breathing technique.
and then slowly open the eyes, bring the hands alongside and turn your right knee out to the side. Starting in kickstand, then bring heart hands to heart center. So you can stay here with your toes resting on the earth or maybe slide the foot up to the inside of the calf or for some, maybe the inside of your thigh. Keep your concentration on something not moving in front of you. And keep your focus on your breath. Maybe at whatever point to grow the branches of your tree, not worrying about what your neighbor is doing. And just bringing all your awareness inward. Closing the pose. Bring your knee into your chest and release it down. Come back to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Close your eyes. Actually, one hand to your belly, one hand to your heart. Inhale a third of the way, a third, a third. Exhale a third, a third, a third. Arms alongside, open the eyes, finding that drishti again, bringing your awareness to your breath as you almost unconsciously turn your left knee out. Hands to heart center. Match whatever you did on the other side. So placing your foot wherever you did on the other side. Focusing on your breath. Maybe growing the branches of your tree, maybe not. Do whatever will help you maintain the concentration. Closing the pose, hugging the knee into the chest and coming to Tadasana. Close the eyes and just stand here for a few breaths. Inhale and exhale fully and deeply through the nose. Open the eyes, inhale, float the arms overhead. And exhale, dive forward into your forward fold. Hold opposite elbows, hang like a raggedy and doll. Full breath in, full breath out. Full breath in, full breath out. And release that bind, start to bend the knees. Coming up on your toes, lifting your heels for our tiptoe squat pose. If you want to use blocks on either side to put your hands on, so it looks like this. If you want to challenge yourself with a little bit more balance, hands to heart center, spine tall. Your seat can rest on your heels, or you can engage your thighs and glutes to lift your seat off of your heels. Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, release, coming onto the mat and legs extend out in front of you. Draw your right knee into your chest, drop the knee out to the side. So this is called Janu Shirsasana. It's one of our forward folds. Maybe move the flesh away from that left sit bone. Right, left leg, extending straight out, flex that foot. Inhale the arms up by the ears and a slight micro twist to the left. Now hinge, forward lead with the heart. 
at the point that you're gonna feel that rounding start, drop your hands down so that you can try and keep the spine as long as you can in this forward fold. Inhales, match the exhale. So fully let the breath exhale completely. And then inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Maybe even let the eyes soften or close. One more inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And then inhale to come up. Lifting that right knee up and extending that leg out in front of you. And then draw the other knee into your chest. Drop out to the side. A little <laughs> flesh away from the sits bones. <laughs> extending this right leg, right foot flexed. Arms float up, slight micro twist to the right. And then we hinge. Keep that spine long, as long as possible at the point that you'll start rounding, let the hands come down and then stay there. Closing the eyes or soften the gaze and empty the breath fully out. And then tuning into the inhale, two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. One more time. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And inhale to come up. Lifting this left knee and then extend that in front of you. One more forward fold. Hashimoto. Asana. So legs stay straight, push your big toes away, pull the pinky toes towards you, inhale, arms up, get nice and long, and then again, it's a hinging forward. Notice how you're leading with the heart. At the point that you're going to round, bring the hands down, soften the gaze, close the eyes, soften your shoulders. Feel the Inhale, almost lift you up out of your seat. Feel the exhale, move the breath to the low back. Maybe feel the massage of your digestive system on the inhale. the fullness of the breath reaching the back, the lower body on your exhale. One more full inhale and exhale and then inhale to come up. So moving into your meditation seat. So it can be crossing the legs and sitting up on a block. <laughs> Some might opt for hero's pose where you place the block in between your ankle bones and you can have your seat resting, drawing the knees toward each other. It's a nice way to get the spine long. So choose whichever seat you'll be able to Sit comfortably in and meditate. Sometimes it's hard with the legs extended if you're not sitting on something because then you're, the effort's going to be in keeping yourself up. So you could try two blocks even under the seat. Not sure if your blocks look steady. Are they... Are they long way? Are they this way? <coughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> so coming into 
meditation here. So close the eyes, let the hands rest in any comfortable position. So starting this process of withdrawing our senses. So notice right now the sense of hearing, if you're hearing any sounds from outside or inside the room. Sense of smell, if you're picking up on any scent. If the eyes are open, if you're looking at anything, sense of touch. And now bring all your awareness to your breath. Your inhales and your exhales. as we bring our concentration to only one thing, we begin to turn inward. We begin to withdraw from those senses. Meditation, according to Sharon Gannon, is the practice of watching your mind think. To listen within. Trusting that everything is exactly the way it should be. Resting in the timeless. If a random thought comes into your mind, acknowledge it and then let it pass by. Coming back to focusing on your breath.
with as little movement as possible, moving on to your back. Separating the legs a little bit so you have some space for the body to enlarge its outline. Take the arms away from your body a little bit. Turn palms to face up. Letting the whole body sink into the support of the earth. Swami Nirmalananda, the silent sage, speaks, our main duty is to go beyond thoughts. All yoga practices, including meditation, are designed to reveal the existing happiness in every cell and tissue of the body and every thought wave of the mind. Through these practices, the yogi seeks to clear the mind of all thoughts that cloud the truth of the psyche that the inner soul or self exists eternally in a state of happiness. To truly be happy, we must bring the mind into a condition of clear perception. And with clear perception, the mind reflects the self like a clean mirror. When we're able to stop identifying with our thoughts, the fluctuations of the mind, then there is yoga, samadhi, happiness, bliss, and ecstasy. Allowing the brow to soften, the jaw to unhinge, the tongue to drop away from the roof of your mouth. Begin to deepen the breath. Maybe bring the hands to your belly to feel the rise and fall of your breath. As you begin to bring yourself back to greater awareness. Wiggle the fingers and the toes. Circle wrists and ankles. Maybe inhale the arms overhead for a long stretch. And then drawing knees into your chest and rolling onto, I like the right side, having a heart higher than the rest of our body. Extend the right arm out to support your head. Take a couple of deep breaths here.
And then when you're ready, making your way up to a seat, crossing the legs, keeping the eyes closed or at a soft gaze. Rooting down through the sits bones, spine grows long. Bring your hands to your heart center and just take a moment to recall the intention that you set. So today practice, we moved through the physical, moving us toward that balance pose, to that state of concentration, to then our forward fold where we were able to bring our awareness to our breath, helping us to withdraw from the senses, moving into our state of meditation, dhyana. And if there was a moment of samadhi, if not, that's what the practice is all about, to move you toward that. So take a moment to thank yourself for being here. I thank you for being here. It is always an honor and a privilege to lead this practice. So let's close with the sound of Om. Take a full inhale. Sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> oh. I know. <laughs> you just lay down. Yeah. <laughs> Go find a nice spot under a shady tree. Yeah, she's been there. I think this is her tenth year, and yeah. she's like enough. Or... Yeah, I've been there eighteen years. Oh, so okay. It's... So you've seen a big oh, change, yeah. and it's mm -hmm. gotten so expensive. However, yeah. it was I enjoyed it. Good, I good. My uh, spouse and I are going to find someone else. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Time to yeah yeah so yeah. so some yeah. seeds yes exactly <laughs> thank you for asking oh you're welcome yeah I got there finally in May oh wonderful and um, we had a nice visit it's funny because um, I had been to all the other big city places mm -hmm. and I've never liked it. no the rest so of the state is left I really yeah. didn't want to ever go back but my daughter's close with my friends so I was like all right we'll do a mom daughter. Uh -huh. And I'm glad that I got to see it. Um, it is obviously very different. It is very different, us. yes. Yeah. And I could see the charm and the, the appeal. So. Yes. But I think we're done now. Yes. I don't know if I'll ever go back to town. No, I, don't blame you. I don't blame you. Right. Oh, yeah. I don't blame you. Right above Houston. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's just, yeah, horrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we can find we can find beauty and but it's yeah, oh the yeah the the um 